What is good? X go give it to you. <laughs> Talking about Twitter. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's dude, what throwing I'm cha- me off. I'm like looking for Twitter. What that's what I'm changing. Dude? That's what I'm uh, changing my my Twitter on my phone to. It just says "gonna give it to you." <laughs> <laughs> What's good? We're back. We uh, we got a little uh, tripod for you. Gonna hit you with. Uh, we got the uh, quarterbacks and the running back top twenty fours. Uh, we're going to hit you with some wide receiver top 24 stone cold lock of the century of the week. <laughs> so uh, we got we got our uh, our top 24 wide receivers. We're going to do uh, 25 through the 50, 60 or whatever on the uh, Patreon side of things. Uh, and then after we knock those out, we'll have uh, the overall rankings and tiers up on our uh, Patreon and Discord. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. Uh, extra extra three shows a week. Be doing that all through the uh, end season two. Probably be con- kind of continuing the uh, conversation that we're having uh, on the Monday live streams uh, right over onto uh, the Patreon on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Going to do a live uh, Thursday hang, watching a game once a, once a month there. Uh, try to try to make that work. So uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. I'm excited to get the season started. The Hall of Fame game is on and rolling. So I saw, uh, you know, laundry on grass. So that was exciting. And we're ready to roll. You know, we're going to go through these. They've changed a little bit. We did a little bit longer form version on the Patreon to kind of warm up to this a little bit, uh, have a longer conversation. So this will be a little faster, a little shorter. And, you know, I've changed a few around and I'll continue to change a few around. And that's just kind of how this goes. You, you, you wake up one day and you feel a certain way. And, you know, today I'm, I'm feeling this kind of way. So deal with it. The next um, gives it to you. And that's right. You that camp hype video and that's, shit changes. That's right. That's right. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, comment below, all that jazz, five star reviews, uh, Revelry Bruco for a shirt that looks kind of like that logo up there. Uh, all of the support greatly helps. And we are going to get off to the races. I think tier one uh, for me and I think for Big D is pretty much the same. I think it's the same universally worldwide. Mm. Uh, you know, you don't need a metric system or a standard system here. It's all. It's all the same. Uh, We're going Jefferson and Chase in tier one. Uh, If you really wanted to split up Jefferson by himself, I would would take uh, Jefferson over Chase um, pretty much every time. Uh, But, you know, what's your feelings there? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, JJ is JJ's it, man. He's 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 number one in my hearts right now. Uh, I have multiple hearts. That's why it's plural. Uh, Chase is like number one a b right so it's not even one b it's like one a and one a b that's how close it is so. yeah rolling with my baby with a toy that you can't buy from kb mm-hmm. a little, <clears throat> little fabulous you know. <laughs> um all right let's it's just a 16 on a track 16 <laughs> from a gap let's uh let's keep it moving here <laughs> tier two for me i got cd lamb aj brown uh in that order what what's your tier two look like uh big d a couple extra friends uh, in in the station wagon. We got uh, Lamb, Waddle, and then I'm gonna go Alave and Wilson in that order too. I I, I like Alave over Wilson, which I know is Ooh, holy smoke, spicy, unbelievable. But I mean, Somebody honestly, they're both. Me. Yeah, they're <laughs> both. Uh, I, I've seen enough, and I feel comfortable enough. Um, not just from their performance where I think they're gonna be, but also from their long term value of how it's gonna hold up. There's not many holes in that boat. So I think, you know, I can draft them, feel really good about putting them in there. If my heart changes, um, you know, my heart goes on later on, I can move off of them because they're not going to lose any value. So Shout out I, to I Celine. Feel, yeah. Just had to get a little Celine action in there. Yeah. But um, she was famous around the time that Art Monk was catching balls behind me. But yeah. uh, no. Uh, yeah. So Lamb, Waddle, Olave, and Wilson's my, my tier two um, notable there's somebody notably missing, um, mm. but uh, mm. yeah, I, th- I think for me from tier two here to, and we'll get to tier three and four here in just a second, but I think I don't have a real problem with you moving, you know, if you wanted to make a bigger tier here at tier two and throw guys like you have in there. And then, you know, if I, if I, I, I would be fine with throwing St. Brown in there. So uh, we'll kind of keep it moving, keep that conversation rolling. I got, I got Garrett Wilson and Waddle in tier three. And like I said, I think you could, take that velvet rope down and you could put Olave and St. Brown in that tier with them. And, and I would feel fine about that. I separated Waddle and Olave or Waddle and, and Garrett Wilson uh, from those two guys because it, it, it 
felt like it they had maybe a little bit better chance of of possibly reaching uh chase and jefferson status and maybe usurping them at some point not saying that it will happen but i think the ability is there um and especially with aaron Rodgers um being with garrett wilson at least for another year if they win the super bowl he might be out but it seems like he might be in for two or three so all that's good and i, I think that 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 you know, he said a few. That means more than two. <laughs> yeah, he said if he wins the Super Bowl, though, he's mm-hmm. he's riding out. Um, I think so. Uh, but interesting uh, that that again, like I think Waddle has the ability to uh, eventually jump Tyreek in the pecking order, and if that ever happens, he would for sure be in tier two for me. But right now, he's staying in tier three. And Wilson, I just need I need to see one more. I need to see a year of just being great all the way through and see what a good quarterback uh, really elevates him to. Uh, that's my tier three there. Um, we'll, we'll hit tier four in just a second. Who you got in tier three? Yeah, I mean, uh, real similar. AJ, well, similar names. AJ Brown, um, I've got the Sun God in there. Um, and then I also popped Tyreek Hill in there. He's kind of the, the first of the, yeah, the... the the older statesmen, I mm-hmm. guess you could call them. Um, but he's just, you know, you, you kind of alluded to it in, in your conversation about Waddle. He's just so electric in such a game. It, there's all these wide receivers are great. Um, they're all top notch, high floors, uh, you know, great ceilings. But Tyreek's one of those guys that his ceiling is just uh, a little bit. He, he's a little bit. Uh, we went back on the uh, the house building exercise. He's he's got those that nice vaulted ceiling with the staircase that kind of goes up. Man, yeah. I just uh, he he's he's had it for a while, and and I don't see it dropping off anytime soon. Yeah. All right. He said it'll do three more. That's enough. That's enough for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, elite elite production, you know. Yeah. The eighth that's overall a, scorer a, in PPR, including quarterbacks, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that puts him, what, 31? So that's enough for me, too. So it works out. I'm, he didn't call me on it, but um, – before he spoke about it but you know it's, it's all good <laughs> right all right we'll keep it moving here four i got olave and saint brown so like i said i think you could take that velvet rope down i think you could put those guys with they have the ability to uh get up there in, into two or or one in my opinion certainly olave saint brown you could maybe say that you're drafting him at a ceiling but whatever uh it's okay mm-hmm. to draft really good players at their ceiling who's just happened to score a lot of points uh, i think the fact that him and and um golf are are have had time together and are locked in together uh i i don't i don't see you know too much getting away from saint brown and and you know again we i he's been really good and i think he can continue to get better Uh, i know that's crazy um he's really you know hasn't been in the in the league but but two years here going into his third year right um and has just been outstanding i know that he's a target hog but i think that could stay semi-consistent and i don't think it's going anywhere as long as golf's around and certainly that ben johnson's around so uh not worried about saint brown he's proved that he's a stud in olave i think if we could get michael thomas on the field um and get some more weapons around him i think that would help him out especially going into the second year here Derek carr getting comfortable acclimated offensive line may be a little bit of an issue we, we shall see um, but like Chris Olave a whole lot. So that's my tier four. Who you got? Yeah, tier four, four for me stretches out a little bit. I, I wasn't quite sure what to do with the Seahawks wide receivers. I, I feel like I know Metcalf has kind of continuously seems to sink down in a lot of rankings, but I, I still feel like his his output and what he can how he could be is uh, is going to be high. So it, so we got Metcalf, JSN, Drake London, and and digs i would say kind of in that order i don't know i i go back and forth like you know it's kind of like popcorn one one time somebody pops up to the top and london may be at the top of that tier for me one, you know tomorrow i don't mm-hmm. i don't know but they're all kind of right in there for me that's kind of the top um if if you were to put numbers by my tiers it's basically the top 12 with a bonus top 13 wide receivers and like you, you would alluded to, like if somebody wanted to move one or two of these players up a tier or or, or down a tier, it, you know, it's it's all gravy, baby. It's right. it's you know, you you have these these boys on your team, you're 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 uh, you're in good shape. Is is the way I look at it. Yeah, for sure. Tier five, I'm going JSN, Drake London, uh, Devonta Smith in my tier five. Um, I'm basically. Um, kind of splitting up. I, I notice that I haven't thrown any of the old guys there. I'm kind of leaving that up to you and, and leaving the older guys on a sliding scale as a, as, as according to your build and, and according to how comfortable you are with taking the older guys here. That would be the Hill, the, the Cup, the Diggs, and the Adam. 
Um, you know, I'm going to put these these tier five guys, JSN, London, and, and Smith ahead of them in, in my tiers that, that you can look at because, uh, you know, just the youth is there. And I think all those guys, you know, Devonta Smith has, has proved um, that, that he belongs uh, near the top of, of receivers, the talents there. And, and uh, we feel comfortable with, with Hertz. Uh, you know, one more year would really make you feel super comfortable with Hertz, uh, but we certainly feel a whole lot more comfortable than last year. JSN may be a year, but I think we know that, that there's, a, there's a bona fide stud there. You know, you, you, you got DK up there. You know, we need, I don't know how long Lockett's going to be. He's been great. He always outperforms ADP. He never goes away. He's a stud, but at some point, um, you know, it's going to be the JSN and DK show seemingly. Um, obviously the beneficiary of all this is, is Gino Smith, um, who, who is, you know, really, I think being under, under loved for what he did last year and kind of what he has in front of him this year. Um, so tier five there, JSN, uh, London again, the, the JSN, I think could eventually be a one or kind of like Smith, a great two, um, but I, I think he's more of a one uh, as far as fantasy points and London, you know, up there with me because I think he's he's got all the potential in the world to be a bona fide number one. Um, and, and he's a guy that I haven't, I, you know, I just I just uh, I can't stop. I can't stop until I get enough. Um, I just keep taking him. Uh, I keep trying to trade for him. Um, if we the, the Falcons seem like they like Ritter a good bit, that they have a lot of confidence in him. Um, yeah. And we saw at the at the end of last year when Ritter took over over the last four games, the amount of passing attempts all all ticked up uh, a good bit. And we don't need them. We don't need them to go up crazy. We just need to be them to be in that, you know, Philadelphia like area and in, in the in the low 20s, maybe creep up into the into the low teens or high teens rather um, in passing attempts. And I, th- and I think you will will see that they were doing um, what they needed to do to stay competitive in games with Mariota as a quarterback. Uh, I think they got a little taste of Ritter. They're going to they're going to trust Ritter. And I think you're going to see, um, you know, them going from a top two or three overall uh, r- attempt rush attempts per game team to probably more like a 10th overall in rush attempts per game, but they're going to be so damn efficient in those attempts and Bijan's so good. Uh, they're not going to get away from being a running team, but I think with, with Drake and Pitts, I don't think you need to worry. Uh, you know, all you have, I don't think you have to worry about low attempt thresholds. I think it'll be right in the, in the median average kind of, um, I think you just need to worry about is Ritter the guy, which, you know, which, you know, which is why London's here and not maybe in uh, up there with potentially, you know, in tier four or tier three right now. So it's, it's, I, I know he's a good player. Can we get the quarterback play to uh, match, know, match it up there? So uh, I got London there. So who, who do you got? Yeah. So tier five for me. Um, and I, I love all the London talk that you're talking about. He's, uh, I bumped him into tier four because I, I think that he's kind of proven to me that he can do it with, <laughs> If you can do it with Mariota, yeah. uh, you know, the, the the sky's the limit for him. So, um, but in tier five, I've got, um, and this is where, you know, this is, this starts to create the differences. I think I've got Chris Godwin, the forgotten man, uh, the slim Reaper, Devonte Smith, uh, Terry McLaren, uh, T Higgins and Christian Kirk. Whoa. Nelly. Christian Kirk is really high, but, um, Are my, you my really feelings high? with, How high? <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, so. <laughs> Um, my feelings with Kirk are just, uh, you know, he's he's get catching the ball from T-Law. Everyone expects T-Law to continue to grow, that offense to continue to to, to tune up, I guess, in the Doug Peterson office. Office? office? Yeah, that'd be a fun special. Um, in the Doug Peterson offense, um, and I, I know that Calvin Ridley's there. I, I know that he had a toe issue and he changed his cleats or whatever. Now he's good. But um, it's just, for me, Christian Kirk's, done it he's proven that he was worth the contract in my opinion um i feel very confident that he can you know he can be a solid uh solid number two wide receiver with a number you know with a wide receiver one upside um and i think the volume of that offense is going to continue to grow like i was just saying and Mm -hmm. so all those things combine i mean if if we t law's not mahomes right he's not going to distribute the way that mahomes does and so i feel yet. like he's gonna have yes yes maybe not 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 right away uh this next year i feel like he's gonna still do some target focus and and kirk i think is uh gonna be a big beneficiary of that so so kirk's a little high for me higgins is a little high for me personally um 
because because I hate Higgins according to a lot of people. But um, <laughs> son of a but, bitch. Uh, yeah. So it goes uh, Godwin, Devonte Smith, Terry McLaren, T Higgins, and Christian Kirk. Uh, tier five. Yeah, I mean Kirk Kirk pretty high there. Might might take a little heat, but I get it. You know, it, it see it does seem like you're not. I don't, I don't think you're fucking it up by taking Kirk. Maybe you know you're not saying to maybe take him that high. You gotta you gotta see where the no. ADP is. Uh, but he's the guy that you don't want to miss. Uh, so maybe you would take him around early um, as opposed to, you know, being around late on him, which I, I believe he's a, in 8, eight, eight ten, 10 in the FFD ADP. So, you know, you, you might move him up to a seventh round pick uh, so you don't miss him. And if Yeah, and that's the, that's the exact point is like, uh, you know, with a lot of these tiers, um, part of playing with tiers, right, playing with them as in when you're drafting with them, you kind of look at where are those players going in 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 the round. So just just as a as a use case, right? As an example, you just said it. Kirk is eight ten. He's at the end of the eighth round for us in our FFD ADP. Higgins and Devonte Smith are um, and and they should be. They're they're up at that that uh, end of the third, going into the fourth round. But for me, if I can add somebody in that third uh, into the third round, running back maybe a tight end in a premium position and then kind of fall back to Kirk. I don't think my production from a point scored at the end of the year is going to be, you know, tremendously um, slashed. And mm-hmm. and that's kind of why I feel like he's, he's safe. He's got, like you said, a safe, safe floor. Um, but I, I, I have obviously with my ranking up here, I feel like his ceiling is a little higher than people give him credit. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Take uh take your shots. Call your shots, little little Babe Ruth. Hey, go in, go in yard. I'll I'll keep it moving here. Tier six for me. I got uh, like I said before the older the older uh, guard here, all kind of lumped into one. Um, and I, I I think you can distribute that however you want. You can move some of those guys up. You can move some of those guys even back two tiers if that's you know not what you're doing. If you're in productive struggle mode. You know, they may be more tier eight guys for you or just do not draft guys for you. Um, mm-hmm. But here's where I have Hill, Cup, Diggs, and Adams. Um, Hill being, if we're ranking in tier, uh, the top of that. Um, Cup, what would be second? I probably got to bump him down and probably put Diggs above him right this minute. Just already a little worried about Cup with a, with a, 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 tw- a twinge of an injury here. Um, so it's not great, yeah. but I mean... You know, he, he he was your points per game champion and, and just was absolutely ridiculous last year. Uh, if he can be on the field, uh, he can be a league winner for you. And then Diggs in there and Adams, you know, you, you feel pretty good about those guys. Adams probably has is the cheapest of all those guys. So if you if you want to if you want to wait around um, and, and grab a cheaper older guy, he, he's probably your man. Um, and like you said, I, I don't mind if you want to take, you know, Tyreek Hill up there with with the likes of uh jsn or whatever i i would i would my theory would be in that top you know four or five rounds four three four rounds there um you know i'd take like a jsn and, and then you know if tyree kills around i'd go hill jsn or hill uh london or cup uh london or you know try to try to mix and match those two guys a little bit um uh, for me personally uh so that's that's kind of my tier six, and like I said, that's kind of on a on a bit of a sliding scale there, depending on how your build's going. So I, I f- felt like that was the best way to kind of um, group those older guys together in in that you know mid middle area of these top twenty four. So yeah, no, that that makes sense. My tier six is very similar. Um, I've got Cup, I've got Adams in there. Of course, I already had Diggs and and Hill a little higher. So mm-hmm. um, um, I I also squeezed in Amari Cooper, the forgotten man of the old guys. Um, Mm -hmm. He's in that tier for me. Um, And then, so my tier total is six players. I've got Pittman, Debo, uh, Hollywood Brown, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, and Amari Cooper, all kind of mix and match, not necessarily in that order. Again, it's one of those things where, as you said, depending on the build, for me, depending on the day, um, I can kind of move around from, from all those players and in, in, in any order and feel okay. That's also partially what the whole concept of tears is. <laughs> right. Um, and so, um, so yeah, Pittman, Debo, Hollywood, Cooper cup, Devonte Adams, Amari Cooper is tier six. Yeah. I mean, you know, Amari, Amari was fantastic last year. Um, 
Well, Marsh fantastic almost every year, uh, man. Like right. <laughs> it's it's as long as he's he, out there, he's good. Yeah, you know? yeah. As long as his foot wasn't bothering him, the dude is just or a little soft tissue. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. He he, I, I don't mind you know sticking him up there, and and I liked you know I'll I'll hit on Terry and Godwin and Hollywood here in a second. Um, so you're at you're at 24 there. Oh yeah, yep. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> yep, zip it. I've made it. Your Tony Reale gets to mute you. Um, <laughs> So uh, tier seven for me is DK Higgins Pittman. Um, so that's kind of, like I said, I sandwiched those older guys in between some more youths. Um, we got DK Pittman and, and, and Higgins. I feel like there's a little bit of yeah, but with all those guys, you know, s- sort of, uh, whereas, you know, I think I, I like them all. Um, I, I think they've all been very productive uh, throughout their career so far, but they're not. They haven't quite established themselves as as being the elite of the elite, but I still love right. taking them. Um, so you know, DK with JSN and Lockett. You know, we, we don't really know Higgins with with Chase. Uh, you know, and we've seen that work out pretty well. I you know Higgins is is you know I'm not not af- not afraid to take way Higgins. too low on Higgins. Both of you, um, pretty pretty solid player. Um, and then Pittman uh, probably ends up being the guy I end up with the most out of this tier, just because he hangs around a little longer. Um, and you know, look at look at the guys Pittman's played with quarterback wise. You know, right. Matt Ryan at the end of his career, Carson Wentz. Uh, you know, and this year he's going to come in with a rookie who you're garbage. <laughs> who you know, I like I like the rookie, and I think Pittman will be just fine. Um, and and you know. He can be kind of a, a a target hog in in this offense with the rookie, so you know I'm I'm okay with that. And he's still only 25. He, he's shown me how good he can be. Um, you know, had had some lulls in last season, uh, but not afraid of of Pittman uh, by any means. So that's my tier seven, um, and then tier eight, tier nine, and tier ten um, as we roll through this thing. You know, this is kind of when the draft kind of starts as as for as far as wide receivers go. Um, I think all the rest of those guys, you can move them around a little bit and everybody feels a certain way. I like that you moved uh, some of these guys that are in these lower tiers. Like I said, the the Godwins and uh, the Terry's, you know, they're a little bit in that Pittman category where they they never really played with a good um, quarterback. And I think those guys would be. You know, round two, round three picks. Um, uh, well, Godwin has, and we've seen what he does when he de- what he does when he has He's had a good it. quarterback uh, and, and been healthy. And you know, so uh, I don't I don't have Godwin and Terry in this next tier. I'm going with a little bit more youth there. But again, I could I could stick them in there at any point. Um, and I and you know. Hollywood, Terry, Debo, Godwin, um, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, like those are all guys I want. Like this is this is a spot where I'm I'm looking in that sixth, seventh round to trade back into or trade up from and just gobble up three or four dudes in this area. Um yeah. I always sleep better with a little sausage in me. Um <laughs> so you know this is a, a just a prime area. I, the, the guys in my next tier in eight are Addison Burks, Jamison Williams, Flowers, and Quentin Johnston. Now, uh, Addison, Quentin Johnston, Burks, and sometimes Jamison Williams go a little higher than the range that maybe I'm saying to trade into right now. Um, but you know uh, that's that's because there's there's a lot more youth on their side, and and the projected upside is is uh you know a little higher than so let's say pickens and you know watson's not necessarily in there for me i just uh, i'm not 100 percent sure how that offense is going to be run and who it's going to be run through i think it's going to be a little more balanced run heavy i think watson's good but um you know i'd rather take the shot on flowers um i'd rather take the shot on addison i think those guys are going to outscore christian watson this year and Traylon's just i'm not i'm not, i just bought Traylon in a one quarterback league um i traded uh, one eight and one ten for one eleven and Traylon, um, and that's a one quarterback league. So I, I'm still buying. You know, everyone's like it's 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 nukes there. So it's it's going to be nuke. It's like well, it, this could easily be you know Traylon with a side of nuke as well. Like it it could go that way. And you know Traylon's you know that dude. Um, and and um, we've seen um, Tannehill support two top twelve wide receivers. Um, 
So I, I really like Traylon and what's going forward. Jamison Williams under some some flack here and there, but then you know you see videos of him just running six yards past dudes as well, and that's that's yeah. what Jamison Williams is. Um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cape for him anymore. I caped for him all off season. Uh, you can throw all the silly bullshit numbers you want out of unproductive rookies, yada yada yada. Gambling, what gambling? Yeah, that stinks, man. Like I, I got it. Like, but the, the explosiveness and what this guy can do, being the most electric guy on the field, and and everybody knows it, and you still can't stop him. And the the nonsense that he's only a field stretcher is silly. He worked at all different levels at Alabama and was successful. Um, yep. So uh, I'm still all in on Jamison Williams. Maybe he's a bit of a knucklehead. Uh, but you know, he's been Calvin Johnson mentoring him going to, you know, keep him under his wing a little bit, uh, like all those things. And I love where Detroit's going as, as an organization and as an offense, the offensive line's great. Golf is good. I'm in Ross St. Brown's good. And then you have two rookies who you think are going to be really good in, in Laporta and Gibbs. Uh, and then Monty, we, we pretty much know what we're getting there, you know, a solid RB. Uh, so that offense, you know, is going to be a whole lot of fun still in, into JMO flowers, you know, Flowers is just shooting up boards because every time you turn around, Flowers, everybody's f- giving him his flowers. Uh, he's yeah. unguardable. Peter King said he was the best best camp player he's seen uh, in the last six years. Uh, just Wow, yeah. Un- un- I, we love the guy. I know there's some other people out there that love them. There's some people who are off of him for whatever reason, uh, but I'm, I got him. Uh, he doesn't get drafted up there with the Addisons and the Quinton Johnstons, mm. but, uh, and I'm not saying you need to move him up that high, much like we were talking about with um, Christian Kirk there for you. Just take him around earlier than, than um, you know, you don't need to draft him where Addison over Addison uh, by any means, but, uh, you know, so that's... Yeah, he's I mean, going 7-7 uh, seven, seven in the ADP and... and Jameson's up at six four. Addison's at like five something. Addison and Quentin five four and five, five four and five five. Right. Um, so you know you can go to the rookie talk and hear me kind of talk about those guys a little more and what I like about them, uh, why I got them up here. Um, so that's that's my that's that's going to end my my rankings because if I go any further, then the next tiers get kind of big because you got Judy who I like a lot and Ayuk who I like a lot and and Watson and DJ Moore and and Scary Terry and Godwin and Hollywood and Deontay Johnson and Amari Cooper and Jahan Dotson and Christian Kirk and Ridley and it's like, you know, I guess we could tear those guys up if you want, but it's like man, I just I just want as many of those guys as I can get, um, you know, yeah. so. Th- those tiers are just kind of a little bit bigger than me, bigger for me because I, I I don't really like. Yes, I have a preference like Godwin, Terry, and Debo, and DJ Moore, and Jerry, Judy, and Ayuk would probably be the leaders in the clubhouse of the tiers there, and then Watson and Pickens, um, and you know I guess I put Hollywood up there with Terry. Uh, he was a top five PPR wide receiver last year uh, with in the first six games of the season, um, you know with Kyler Murray. Uh, so Hollywood could be right up there. Uh, we know what Deontay can do. I wouldn't throw him up there necessarily. Uh, but, you know, Debo, you didn't get to see a whole you, you, they got a whole offseason now to scheme. You know, we've kind of gone back and forth. Right. It's been we took Debo when he was cheap and it paid off. And then we took Ayuk when he was cheap and it paid off last year. Now, uh, you know, Debo's kind of fallen down a little bit. Might be time to pounce on a little bit of Debo again uh, where, you know, they haven't had a whole off season. CMC came in and Debo was kind of banged up through a lot of the season last year. Um, and to, to give Kyle Shanahan, who is widely regarded as one of the smartest schemers in the league, uh, that kind of versatility uh, with him and with Debo, CMC, Ayuk and Kittle is just, you know, to, to give him the whole offseason. I think we might be sleeping on that. And, you know, we can't really look into too much of what was going on at the end of last season and the splits, because I think you're going to see something completely different. Um, with with how they use him and how they approach um, Debo so and Christian together and Ayuk and all that so um, I love uh, like I said there, there's there's just a really really big tier here I don't want to go too much longer because we're going to increase the video length um, <laughs> yeah. but there the, the the fact of the matter is is there's you know 35 guys uh, you know as far as one through 35 of wide receivers that you know I don't mind having here and which is you know why it becomes a little harder to take some of those running backs that we have a lot more questions on um when we get into the you know the tier four five six of the running backs uh where there might be miles and Mixon, and you know 
and Aaron Jones and, and the Chubbs of the world that you kind of feel good about going into the season. Well, there's a whole bunch of wide receivers here that you feel really good about. So um, I guess, you know, that that's that's really my point here is just to live in live in that zone uh, of, you know, from Addison to, to Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk. Uh, and I don't think you can really go wrong. Um, you know, I know some people probably like or dislike some guys more. Some people are like, why isn't Watson higher? Um, you know, going to be mad about that. Hit us in the comments below. Right. And he, I don't have them necessarily low. I just happen to like these couple of young guys a little better than the rest of those guys. And if, like I said, if Terry and Godwin, I felt better. If Tommy was still with Godwin, Godwin would be up in fucking tier five, six, seven. Uh, you know, if Terry had a quarterback that I felt really good about, um, you know, he, he, he would probably be up in tier four, tier three, even. Um, so, uh, just, just throwing that all out there. Uh, because I don't want to disrespect those guys because I think I want them on my team. So um, uh, anything else from anybody? What do you got, Big D? I think you covered it, man. I mean, I mean, you know, just to kind of to brush up on it, I, I think, uh, you know, we talk about or they talk about people out in the out in the wild talk about position scarcity. I don't feel that with uh, wide receivers, man. Mm-hmm. As you're, uh, you know, as you're naming the name, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Ooh, I'm, I'm yeah. liking it. Uh, you know, I'm 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 liking most of the names. I I can see it's hard for me to to downplay most of those names. And I think you went, you know, just kind of rattling off names. You probably went into you know the 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 wide receiver four, right? Like the right. you know the the uh, 37 through you know whatever i'm not going to do quick math but it it, like and and it just feels good it just feels so good so um you know i think if you want more details like you said catch us on patreon catch us on discord you'll get all all kinds of all kinds of the long form all kinds of the interactions all all the good juicy tidbits you know but uh we're here for your pleasure, however you like it. Yeah, and um, we're, we're going to go back in uh, and pick up from 24 and, and and tear up some of those guys. And I'm sure I'll probably, when we even get to that point on the Patreon in the next week or so, I'll probably even move you know some of these guys around a little bit even and, and, and brush them up to the final resting place until the season starts. Um, so, you know, we'll get tiers 9, 10, 11, 12 worked out over there on the Patreon. So hope to see you over there. Appreciate you guys. Peace.